Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and we are in Myrtle Beach. And I want to go see another Ripley's, believe it or not, auditorium that I have not seen before, and this is the one we're gonna see today. Days with Jordan the Lion and all the weirdos inside. It begins right now. Look, they even have a uh, big Ferris wheel here in town. I've never been to this section of Myrtle Beach before. Right across from Ripley's is a real historic place. I don't know if I'll get to make a video on it while we're here in town, but this is the Bowery, Duffy's Bowery, and this is where the country group Alabama got their start. They were like the house band here for years. And if you look at this sign right out front, it says when they were here. From 73 to 1980, they were, this was their original home. Eighth wonder of the world. Okay, I'm excited because I went to a Ripley's not too long ago and it was like a whole different, like a new Ripley's. They didn't really seem to care about Robert Wadlow and I'm in it for the Robert Wadlow type experiences. So we have Robert on this picture over here. What? She's spinning this. I don't know what's going on over here, but there's a King Kong I want to check out over here. And King Kong is made completely of recycled tires, believe it or not. Here they have a life-size bobblehead of Rip Wheeler from Yellowstone. And look. Robert Wapo. Let's go. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. It says, it belongs in a museum. Archaeologist Indiana Jones' most iconic weapon is his whip. Created by master whip maker David Morgan, this whip was made for the use of Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. 10 feet long and made of 12 plat kangaroo hide, believe it or not. And they were showing that Harrison Ford's using it right there and it's a signed picture but it's completely faded out now. It looks like the Marty McFly hoverboard that they were going to feature is out on loan right now. Believe it or not. Here's Wally made out of scrap metal and some minions made out of toilet paper. <laughs> Gotta love it. They're displaying some of Lucy's hair, a ringlet of Lucille Ball's red hair, and a card with Lucy's hair color formula. There's actually somebody on eBay selling her actual kits from her house. And then here they have Marilyn's handprints from Grauman's slab on display right next to what they call a million dollar Marilyn because it's made of government billion dollar shreds of money. <laughs> Billions of dollars of worn out paper money used to make this. These portraits are made out of cigar ashes, sometimes up to four boxes a day to make a portrait. Oh, look at that, fun pick time. You can get up there and act like you're Marty McFly on the hoverboard. You can see the I Dream of Genie bottle. Look at that. That's cool. Wow. The Genie bottle prop is from the classic cult sitcom I Dream of Genie. Genie was played by Barbara Eden and lived in the bottle exactly like this one, except it was purple and pink. So that is not the one. That one's green anyway. This, look at that. This, uh, hard to believe this is what it is. It says it's Brandon Lee's jacket from The Crow. I just did a vlog on Brandon Lee passing away, making The Crow. It says this was his jacket for 1994 Miramax's film The Crow. And it's mentioning that he died during surgery. And then they're saying these are Sharon Stone's shorts signed on the back pocket by her. All we got to do is Zoltar, and it looks like this one you can actually scan a uh, debit card, so let's do it. It's pretty cool if that really is his jacket. Yeah. All right, Zoltar. Zoltar the Great Make my life better. Here to give you ancient wisdom for your happiness. Pay attention now. I'm Men trying. Of genius are admired. Men of wealth are envied. Men of power are feared, 
but only men of character are trusted. And you know, it never hurts to bribe your friends on sometimes. For example, give me a bit more cash and I will give you your fortune. I'll take the one you gave me down here instead. Oh, look at this. We have Star Trek First Contact's engineering console prop. And it says it was actually used. It says the console is used in numerous Star Trek motion pictures, including First Contact. To date, there have been 13 feature films based on Star Trek franchise. All right. Almost as interesting as Bob Hope's novelty golf clubs up here. He was an avid golfer and played over 2,000 courses throughout his life. He said, golf is my profession. Entertainment is just a sideline. I tell jokes to pay my green fees. Look at all the crazy things he has up there. He's got a Jim Beam bottle at the end of one of them. <laughs> a fan. Here they're claiming that here's one of the toy guns, a toy cap gun. But it was what they based the real blaster. So they say this is Han Solo, Han Solo's blaster, the original production of Return of the Jedi. Custom made, built on a metal working, non firing model version of the German Mauser. That is true. Now I think about it. I've never seen anyone else claiming to have the crow jacket or a crow jacket so oh here we have kamala the indian wolf girl not to be confused for kamala the ugandan giant this is eight years after being carried off and raised by a she-wolf kamala the indian wolf girl was rescued Kamala refused to walk upright, growled and ate raw meat and died of loneliness for her canine family. Here we have cayenne brass earrings and Tibetan human bone rosary. Wow, each bone represents a prayer. Each prayer recited by a believer brings the faithful one step closer to nirvana. It smells like teen spirit to me. Over here we have a new guinea pig head totem topper. It says pigs are worshipped and revered in New Guinea, and hunters often perform elaborate rituals centered around pig totems prior to reporting on pig hunting expeditions. And this says this was acquired by Ripley during his Tibet 1937 trip, this witch doctor's necklace was worn during ceremonies to exorcise demons from dying prisoners. Now this is a crazy one. A cannibal skull. Cannibal trophy skull. Yikes. A lime calabash. In New Guinea, because fruit limes are not available, natives make a chemical lime by burning seashells and grinding them into powder. The resulting lime powder is carried in calabash containers that are often elaborately decorated with symbol of social rank. The lime is eaten by licking it off of a moistened bird bone spatula. Ugh. There's a pig's tooth necklace and a Tibetan skull mask. I'll take one, please. That is a, uh, a penis sheath. It says premarital and extramarital sex are virtually unknown amongst the Denai. Use both as a decoration and protection against insect bites. And then a bird beak war club. Whoa. We have a West African shaman mask. That says that's a soul boat. Part seahorse, part dragon. This vessel of the gods carried deceased tribes been souls to the netherworld so there is an animal face in there 
alligator head. It says alligator banquet, one of the most feared animals on earth, equipped with giant jaws. This gator, a 14 foot long specimen caught near St. Augustine in 1901, had its stomach, a hairball, a hunter's leather cartridge pouch, and yards of fishing line completed with lifted with lead weights. <laughs> Weird. And then here's an obsidian dagger. That is a cane weapon made with shark tooth, shark teeth attached to it. And then over here we have a crocodile jawbone dagger. Believe it or not, this guy's showing off a genuine shrunken head. It began by separating the hair and skin from the skull. I'm hoping they still do it. I've seen some Ripley's souvenir shop sell shrunken heads. Oh, now we're going into King Tut's tomb. The great Tutankhamun. Wonderful deal with the curse of Howard Carter. I feel like that should open. Here's a mummified hand on the right and then a mummified hawk on the left. Here they have some mummy heads on display. You look over here, you can see all kinds of weird things like buried in the ground. Somebody's dog. Robert Wadlow. This is so weird to me that they they do this now, but I, I like the, having the Robert Wadlow. I just think it's weird. They always have them like in Hawaiian shirts everywhere I go. Nine foot tall. Look at that. And he's wearing red shoes. I think Robert would have loved a pair of Air Jordans in his day. He was already taller than his father. He was strong enough to carry him up the pole. As his height grew, so did his popularity. He quickly started showing up in the media more and more. He soon accepted a promotional tour with a shoe company for 800 Michael Jackson. The year following his 2009 death, one billion dollars in revenue. Well, they say sometimes people are worth more dead than alive. The long neck woman, women of the Padawang tribe wear heavy brass rings around their neck starting at the early age of five. Women gradually stretch their necks up to 15 inches long. So there you can see, usually taking 25 rings. There you can see all kinds of neck rings in there. Here's the love chair. They just want your money. I already found love. Then of course, the vampire woman. I feel like she's always at Ripley's. Look at those teeth. Maria Jose Cristerna from Guanajuato. No, actually Guadalajara. And that is a real person. She's got dozens of body piercings, color contacts, implanted horns, stretched earlobe tunnels. Yeah, you can definitely see that there. See all the piercings on the face, the horns up top, the lizard man with all the tattoos, sideshow freak, extraordinaire. There he is. Green inked lips. Teflon implants in the forehead, which you can see right up there for the eyebrows. Nice teeth. Split tongue. Come on, man. Why'd you get lazy on the nipple piercings? Acquiring minds want to know. The human unicorn. These are my favorites when you get to the spinning heads of the famous Hall of Famers here. Robert Ripley photographed this. Man Wang, the human unicorn, in 1931, had a 13 inch unicorn horn growing out of the back of his head, believe it or not. And look, there's a photo. 
that Robert Ripley would have taken when he met him. If you watch Dr. Pimple Popper, she'd probably say it was a cyst now. Oh, look at that. Mike Greenstein of Rockway, New York can still pull cars with his teeth at the age of 91. Oh, I love this one. I've seen this one before. The Lighthouse Man tour guide in Chongqing, China. No, no, as the Lighthouse Man's one guided people, visitors through the streets of Chongqing by the light of the candle that was inserted into his head, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, that was a candle. Just melted right onto the top of his head. Here's Lu Chung, born with double pupils in each eye. Papula duplex is an extremely rare condition where a person has two iris retinas and cornea, the same eyeball. <laughs> Should look like that. Here they're talking about Willie Camper, a giant from Memphis, Tennessee. He was eight feet five and a half inches tall. And you can measure your hand to his because he could hold a dozen eggs unstacked in the palm of his hand. So here they have eggs and they're challenging you to do the same thing. But I'm guessing I won't be able to because look at that. Come on now. Look at this. World's longest lock of hair right there. Six feet, four inches. And it was Darla Reed's hair. And Darla Reed was only 5'2". So this would brush against the floor as she walked. Over here we have the world's longest chewing gum wrapper chain. History of puppy teeth are made in what wow. continues to be one hundred and fifty-four thousand two hundred and fifty-four wrappers of sixty-four different varieties. It goes all the way over here, and then there's a lighthouse painted on a sawfish beak. <laughs> wow. Two-headed, six-legged cow. Well, when you have two up here, that kind of makes sense. Look at that. So four in the normal places, then two on the head for some reason. Here's a two-headed calf skull. An elephant bird egg. What? It's rare elephant bird egg from Madagascar is as big as 183 normal-sized chicken eggs. Could make omelets for a hundred people. The ten foot tall flightless bird was hunted to extinction in the 17th century. Wow, that's creepy. An elephant's foot humidor. In Kenya, elephant's feet were once used as cooking pots. What? Colonial Englishmen noticing how versatile the feet could be. Turn them into umbrella stands, flower pots, calling card boxes, even tobacco humidors. And then something a little less weird. Two-headed lamb. Here we've got the vampire killing kit. 19th century Eastern Europe, travelers to the region offer, often carried a vampire killing kit like this. Here they have a little piece of glass up here in this square, and it says, glass from a chicken's heart. A chicken lived with this piece of glass embedded a quarter of an inch into its heart. Butchered by Claire Hovelson of Preston, Minnesota, 1939, the astonished farmer removed this two-inch piece of glass from its heart. One of my favorites ever, the Fiji mermaid. They said he swore forever this was real. <laughs> I mean, that face, that face looks like it could definitely have some creepy validity to it. But here in this door, it says here is a big pen that was fired from a gun. You can see the pen sticking out of there. Most people load their guns with conventional bullets, but not the people at Waterman Bic Pen Corporation. They fired an ordinary Bic pen from a rifle into an oak plank to prove that Bic could write even after undergoing incredible punishment. Hey, they did that in uh, the John Ritter movie, Real Men. James Belushi. 
where they hammer the pen through a baseball and then show it can write on the other side. All right, we're going into some layer of creepiness. Look at this. Oh, the torture exhibit. Torturing implements. Holy cow. <laughs> this thing goes down when you come in here. I was not expecting that. Reset my heart here. A bridal mask. No oh, thanks. Good old fashioned mace. To quote the Big Lebowski, he's threatening castration. We're gonna split hairs here? Over here we have an executioner's sword. This bottom one. And then a human femur bone for the handle of this one. And then down there they've got just a head and a bucket. Good grief. Good grief, man. And this they're showing that this 12 inch steel rod taken from a Browning machine gun went through someone's eye. Who's this woman? The Iron Maiden. Oh, yes. The Iron Maiden torture device. It has been said that in medieval Nuremberg German prisoners found guilty of hearsay were subjected to the embrace of the Iron Maiden adorned with 14 spikes. That would just pierce you all the way down. There's a cube mosaic of Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. Oh, this is amazing. A model of the dragon. It's a matchbox or matchstick roller coaster model. <laughs> 30,000 matchsticks. Nearly 40 feet of track. That is awesome. With the Ferris wheel work. Here we have a car hood with Lincoln's image carved into it. <laughs> That's great. That looks great. And then over here, you have miniature general store carved from wood. And then over here, they have a guitar and it says, how many country musician autographs can you recognize? And I already saw Gene Shepard, Charlie Pride, Chet Atkins, Johnny Cash. I'm seeing them on there. So here's Johnny Cash right there on the back. That was the first one I saw. And this is a case all dedicated to Donald Trump. They have a boxing glove. It looks like it's kind of faded out, but that was signed by Trump. They have a Donald Trump 50th birthday celebration invitation right there. A Donald Trump signed golf ball, which I've never understood how golfers sign a golf ball, but I've, I've seen people with like Michael Jordan sign golf balls and stuff, so I know they do do it, but that's just so weird to me. And this quilt was signed by 14 nominees for Republican nomination of the presidency in 2016. And Donald Trump has signed it right up here, near Rand Paul. Then they have a bubblegum portrait of Donald Trump. And then this whole wall has signatures of all of the presidents whether they be on checks or historical documents or photos or whatever it is, they have every president up to the current presidents. And then here they have, these are all miniature paintings of all the presidents. Every single one going to Obama, I see at the very end. This says that this is the Lincoln Bugle. For the last two years of President Abraham Lincoln's life, he was accompanied by a personal presidential guard, a 103-member special regiment called the 7th Ohio Cavalry. The trumpeter of this select group was Hiram Cook, age 26 of Pennsylvania. 
The bugle was Cook's bugle and remained in his family for 154 years, passing through four generations before being loaned to the Smithsonian in 1973. And then eventually acquired by Ripley's. Here is a portrait of John Lennon made from pennies. Vincent Van Gogh made out of jelly beans. Did a great job on that. Over here they have a mammoth tusk. And the leg bone of a Desplatosaurus. Look at this. A Mosasaur skull. Whatever that is. They're big too. That is a Stegosaurus? Really? That's crazy. Look as we go in here. Triceratops brow horn. Whoa! It says King of the Lizards. Look at this guy. Wow. And he's got a pterodactyl flying over him. But wow, look at that. Yes, I love animatronics. Speak to me! Tell me your secrets! At least move around. Do something. Come on, man. King of the lizards, I think you'd say something. Get worked up. Tell me, tell me to get out of here. Nope, nothing. That says it is a cast of a T-Rex skull. Genuine ancestor head, the sacred New Guinean head. The bottom of this pit is believed to contain the virtues of the deceased. Within the clay covering is the actual skull of an ancestor. Believe it or not. All right, now let's go in the spinning room. These always have the moving floors, so. Whoa! Now we come out of here and you get to relive big. I wrote that myself. You can take photos of these giant sculptures. Car part four is what they call him. <laughs> well done. Well done. And then, of course, Iron Man. I think that's armor for a cat. It doesn't say, but look at it. Doesn't it look like it? Here we have a horse made out of keyboards, computer keyboard keys. It says whatever you do, don't push the button, so... Whoa! Made from recycled objects. There's a sculpture of Captain America. And they built a special, almost like a packaging for an action figure to display it. C-3PO made out of stable art. That's interesting. They melted these records and put skull faces in each one. Isn't that crazy? Lego illusion of the Joker and Batman. And here's a sculpture of Jack Nicholson from Batman as the Joker. Pretty good version. I did a great job. Oh, look at this neon Kermit the Frog. That is awesome, that fluorescent. There's like a tiger face in that one. 
I don't know if you can see it. Uh, and then it says grab the jewel. They love their compressed air here. <laughs> then if you collect the stamped pennies, Robert Ripley is right here. And he'll make you one. See? He'll grind you up a little penny. You have four options of what you can get on there. I don't collect those though. Well, Ripley's Myrtle Beach, you did not disappoint. It's pretty fun. I'm just Really shocked you don't have any merch. No shirts, no shrunken heads or anything to buy like the other ones I visited. All right, my friends, we are gonna call it a day from Ripley's Believe It or Not, Myrtle Beach. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I did. Have a great night and goodbye.